We are Susie and Rose. That's short for Roland, by the way. Enchanté. Follow our lives renovating a 15th century chateau and citadel. Together with our rescue fur babies, Big Baxter, Mad Max and little Lexi, our beaver. So I'm just going to tidy up this space under the cupboard that I've been painting here because I've got a, an idea for it but I need to fill some holes and paint it first. I think Baxter and Max are probably going to get in there first. I wanted to explain to you how it works. So I've emptied it out. As you can see, we've got a really wonky shelf here, but it's oak, solid oak. And it's actually concreted into, I think it's concreted into the sides. So there's no way we're gonna get that out, but it's part of the character. So when we bought the property, we were told this was a soup heating cupboard and it's got three little grates in here which they would have put coal in, hot coals, and then put pans on the top to keep the food warm. And this is concrete shelf. Um, and then below the embers would have dropped through and below that is where they kept the coal. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is clean up all the stuff in the grate here. Um, I just thought I'd show you these we found in the cupboard. We think they're little spoons. They've got some holes around the edge, but we think they were sort of scoops, scooped like that. Maybe that was a kind of sieve, I don't know. That one's a bit bent. And there was a hook, quite a sharp end on there, so maybe they hung some meat on there or something. Right, I'm in the kitchen and this is our external door going out to the front courtyard and as you can see that's quite a gap under there and you can probably tell by all the leaves and debris down there that it all just blows in here. So I've got to um, put some concrete down there just between the door frame and the outside step. Let me show you. The door butts up to here 
So I need to fill between my finger and the step all the way along, probably up to the height of the step, maybe a slightly more. So that's one thing that needs filling. The second thing that needs filling is in the corner of the kitchen. This was an old a little sink, if you like, where they used to rinse off things. And of course the water would drain through that hole. Well, there's no point having a big hole in your wall. So I need to fill that. Um, what I might do is try to make the mortar a slightly different colour. And then when we come to paint this area, maybe leave that unpainted. So just sort of a little nod to the history really. So anybody else coming in here later on would be able to work out what that was. And area number three is right above the window there. I'm not going to get too close to the window because um, the glare of the window. So when we were working on these lintels, just cleaning them up, uh, there was a load of mortar and really fragile, brittle mortar, concrete or whatever it was. And it just all crumbled away. So we've stuffed some cloths in there temporarily, but the wind whistles through there. So I'm going to fill that with cement. Um, so that's three little areas that will help seal this place in. got to fill this so I've put a line on there from that end to that end so I know where I've got to fill to but it's not quite level but neither is this step neither is that door but there you go I'm at the entrance to our boot room, which is next to our kitchen, and right in the centre, just there, it's a little drainage hole. So when they used to mop floors, um, all the water would drain out through that little hole. So obviously there's no point, whilst this door um, isn't the best seal <laughs> to this room, and there's no heating in the boot room, there's absolutely no point having obvious holes there. So I've uh, filled that hole and also just where I've been working on this step there's one here as well so another drainage hole so I've filled that at the same time 
last evening uh, we were in the kitchen just after dinner and it was really really windy and there was an awful draft coming through the bottom of that door so hopefully I've helped seal that now. Okay well it's getting a little bit windy I'm getting all the leaves blowing in the kitchen it's getting towards the end of the day so I've shut the door and I've put some packing tape on the bottom of the door so I've taken the shuttering off. Had to make a couple of adjustments where it's just a bit high in one, one or two places, but nothing major. Uh, and the door's nice and tight against it, so hopefully that'll sort it out. But as you can probably see from the door, it's not in the best condition. Uh, but I'll have a good go at that in the spring, but um, whether I can save it or not, I think it's a little bit rotten at the bottom, but eh, probably saveable. Anyway, that's the job for another day, but right now, there shouldn't be any draft coming through the bottom of that door now. That's a beautiful evening again. We've really been blessed with some lovely weather the last week or two. I mean, it's now six o'clock in the evening. Uh, what's it today? 27th of October, I think. And um, it's still uh, 25 degrees beautiful see shit weather uh susie wants her uh, hinges painted gold so it's such a lovely evening before it gets dark i'm gonna quickly give them a spray right susie wants her hinges painted so i've prepped them up uh, i've degreased them i've keyed them with some wire wool degreased them uh, dried them I've put um, a few nails underneath because I wanted to raise them off the board. Now, I'm going to show you how to paint with an aerosol because one of my pet hates is whenever I watch one of these makeover TV programs and they grab the um, spray can and then go and spray a piece of furniture. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, it's just the method. Uh, because what they generally do is they look as though they're going to spray some graffiti on a wall or something and they go like that and that's not the way to paint an item so i've put a primer on these and i've put a red primer doesn't matter about the color i just happen to have a red primer um and red under gold is not a bad thing to do actually but you can put gray or whatever um so what we need to do i've given the can a good shake for two minutes and don't skimp on that it's well worth doing um don't do this when spraying you know, I sprayed cars for many years, so I know what I'm doing. So you just spray nice, even coats. And don't do that. Don't arc like that, because what you're doing is you're putting a lot of paint on the middle, but not a lot on the edge, on the outer edges. So you're doing that. So just paint nice and smooth. And the basic rule is plenty of coats, but thin coats. And if you put thin coats, thin coats are always better than multiple thick coats. Uh, because thinner coats dry evenly. Uh, when you put, um, say, if you try to do this in three coats, for example, thick coats, you'll find that the bottom coat can often remain soft because the air can't get to it to dry uh, because you've sealed it in with uh, thick coats of paint. So I always try to warm each coat um, to let, it, let the drying process start. And then every time you spray, you're then spraying onto a warm surface because each coat is getting warmer. Respirator. Okay, so that's one coat, but I've got to make sure I get in all the angles and the edges. And so what I tend to do is spray from different angles and spray in every direction and then you get in every little piece, every little nook and cranny. And there's a good reason for doing that as well. If you're doing a larger piece um, and you spray from the same direction all the time, you can end up with lines where you're spraying joins. And so it's good to vary the angles uh, so you don't get those lines.
Okay, that looks pretty covered. Now, aerosol paint is quite thin, so it's always going to take more coats than you think. Um, I don't know, I didn't count, but I would imagine by the time I've gone all the way around from the different angles, I've probably put 10, 11 coats on, but they're quite thin coats. I haven't been flooding the, th the item. And they're all uh, drying now quite happily. I've put a bit of heat on. You can use a hairdryer if you haven't got one of these um, heat guns. Very important at the end of spraying, turn the aerosol up, upside down, and then spray it. And that removes all of the um, paint from the nozzle. And that's just gas coming through now. So you'll be able to go to that another time and use it. So it's all covered. I'm looking around at it inside and everything and I'm happy and the other little tip uh, look at the background if you can see red coming through the background you know you haven't put enough paint on so I'm happy with that I'm going to leave it 10 minutes and then I always like to seal uh, the paint um, with some clear lacquer now in this case I'm not trying to use the lacquer to give it a sheen I'm just using it to give it a tough outer coating Okay, same principle applies. I've shaken this for two minutes and I'm going to spray across. Now, I'm not going to put 11 coats of this on, I don't need to. But I'll probably spray from four directions. This, that, back towards me and then that side. Because all I'm trying to do is seal the paint and it will cover it and it will seal it. I'm not looking to get a shine on it, so I'm going to be a little bit further away so I don't get wet coats on. I'm just going to do it very lightly, again drying each coat. And that is how to paint with a spray can.